In this video, we're taking another behind the scenes look at my computer workstation, so stick around. Hey, all right, so today we're gonna look at the computer workstation. Last weekend, I got a lot of feedback. You guys enjoyed looking at the electronics workbench. This is gonna cover all the tools that I use at my desktop, that, which accounts for 90% of the time that goes into these projects. So it's either doing ECAD or MCAD or, you know, software development or you name it, anything across the board. It's all the digital work before anything gets cut, sawn, CNC'd, milled, or 3D printed. So let's just dive right in and get started. In the last video, we covered the electronic workbench. We went through all those devices and talked about how I use that workstation. To the right of it, today we'll be looking at the computer workstation, how I use it and what all this stuff consists of. So basically, both of these workstations use the same rolling workstation table. Um, I've made modifications to it, and the first of which you noticed on the electronics workbench, I have this modular component tray that are all magnetically connected. So these can all be uh, you know, added to and configured and rearranged, which makes it nice to declutter this environment so that I can focus on what I'm doing on the computer. Let's just go through those quickly. Um, basically, I keep different types of USB cables that I need to connect to Raspberry Pis or Arduinos or machines and configure them. Um, over here, we've just got some inspirational things. Who doesn't need firecrackers on a, at a workstation? Well, fortunately, this isn't a work environment, it's more of a shop, and that's great for inspiration and breaking those creative blockages. Below, I've got some toys. These, these may be familiar, it's created on the Pocket NC in one of my videos, as well as a couple thinking tools or models just to look at and consider. Um, some sensors and other stuff. A little waste of space, keeping track of the YouTube um, subscriber count and all that fun stuff. On this side we've got some post-it notes, a remote control. The remote control is actually for the light bar above the screen here. Which just gives some fill light when doing zoom calls and all that fun stuff. Back to the organizers, we've got a lot of thumb drives. Thumb drives are the bane of our existence. Whether you're 3D printing or CNC, you need to put, or restoring your PC, you need a thumb drive um, to, to help you out, transfer files and things like that. And I've got some USB, Wi-Fi, and Rocketfish type dongles that add temporary capability to machines or Raspberry Pis and things like that. Across the top, I've got some more inspiration um, Gary John Bishop calendar which gives you that daily kick in the ass to work on your project um, a wireless Plantronics headset for looking like a geek on zoom calls but having great audio got a Mickey Mouse the ambassador of and my boss at my day job but more importantly a little Walt Disney bus that um, is the inspiration for the creative driving force behind Mickey Mouse um, you may have also noticed there's a couple stream decks. There's a big medium stream deck with the 15 button. They have a larger one now. But this is our, our, all my go-to sort of application launchers for file compression or conversion or Slack communication, a couple folders on my machine. And then over on the right-hand side, I've got a smaller one which allows me to change profiles. It also has uh, several of my key apps, Altium Designer, Fusion 360, Chrome, Photoshop, and Premiere. Before we get too far, electronic projects always start with good circuit designs, and for that I rely on Altium Designer. From simple to complex, if you haven't taken a chance to download a free copy and see what you're missing, I've put links in the description, and with Altium Designer, creating these complex projects is a piece of cake. Through your development, you'll be empowered to do your best work as you grow into its more advanced capabilities. The link in the description below will allow you a free trial version of the software so that you can check it out and see what Enterprise Class ECAD feels like. Now back to the overview. Whether I'm doing video editing or ECAD or MCAD or image editing or just surfing the web, those are all right there. And the profile button, as I mentioned, allows me to switch what's on this guy. So I can cycle through there, you know, the machine controls or shortcuts to applications or a soundboard for live streams and things like that. On the back side, you can kind of see that we've got a wireless Xbox uh, controller. Well it's, not a, well, it's an Xbox controller, but I use it on the PC wirelessly. 
I've also got a couple of six terabyte USB drives for local storage and archives of video files and large things that I just want to get off the machine. Also got a bunch of USB ports back here, um, a little audio preamp, and obviously we got this audio mic, which when I'm doing you know, tutorials on the computer, then I use this to capture the audio there. Aside from that, obviously we've got a wide LG, I think it's a 32 inch monitor, and then we've got a smaller portable monitor. This guy is just a 1080p, and everything can be, you know, I can drag them between screens. I generally use the, the smaller screen for, um, you know, printer status or video conversion, things that take longer, or communication like Outlook would be down here as well. And so whatever I'm working on my main screen, maybe Fusion 360, um, then that allows me to work on my main core activity and then still have these ancillary apps running so I can monitor how things are going in the shop and other areas and other activities that I'm multitasking on. Um, <clears throat> what else? DOS keyboard. DOS keyboard is something I always go back to. It's a DOS keyboard pro. It's got the aluminum face. Um, and this is the brown silent non-tactile switches. Um, and so that's kind of nice. That's kind of what I always go back to, even though I've tried a few other um, keyboard setups. On the left side, we've got the 3D connection space mouse. This is invaluable for any 3D manipulation. Um, and once you try these, and uh, you'll never want to go back to a mouse. Um, it allows you to do asynchronous movements while you're doing other stuff with your right hand. Uh, so generally, uh, when I'm working in 3D space, um, with all this particular enterprise edition, it's got all the hotkeys so I can manipulate and I rarely have to use the keyboard, which is really nice, as well as it's got display and some hotkeys up at the top. These hotkeys in the display change depending on the app that you're using. So this can be a shuttle wheel for say Premiere, or it can be a 3D space mouse as it's designed in like Fusion 360 or Altium Designer. On the right side, I've got the 3D Connection CAD mouse. The thing that's nice about this is it's a three button my mouse. Um, the wheel is really nice, it's very fluid, and it's got a large oversized mouse pad that is like ice when it's sliding on this. So it's really great, really enjoy that. Uh, down below, we've got a color laser printer, a UPS, the HP Z820 workstation, Z820 is not the newest, but it's been very flexible and I've been able to upgrade it over the years and it's worked great for my needs. Um, this little triangle thing is a ASUS AC1800 um, wireless card that goes into there. So this workstation is largely disconnected and that's terrible wire management back here. We'll need to address that at some point, but for now it's out of sight, out of mind. Beneath the desk, I've got this keyboard tray, which I don't use for the keyboard, but I do keep like calipers, um, additional little iPhones for recording stuff, um, yada yada, uh, mechanical pencil stuff, pens, uh, rulers for reference on circuit board, trace widths and things like that, um, and just kind of declutter this top surface. So back at the computer, I showed the light bar up there, but there's also a uh, Logitech, I think it's a C920 wide angle camera. Um, so I use that obviously with the cover because hackers and all that fun stuff. So uh, when we look at the workstation, it, I mentioned it's a Z820. Um, I've upgraded this over the years. I've had this since almost, almost nine or 10 years. And so at the time that I purchased it, it was $5,000. Um, a Z820 you can get relatively much less these days. But over the years I've been able to upgrade this and it, just about every component in the device is hot swappable, the power supply, um, it's got still got relevant video card slots, the PCIe 8 by 8 and 16 um, are just great and still support the faster uh, devices. Um, I've got eight 16 gigabyte RAM sticks, not the fastest stuff, but uh, what is it? DDR3, 1866. So having 128 gigs of RAM is nice to multitask, run multiple machines. And I currently have two eight core, 3.4 gigahertz Intel Xeon processors. That gives me 16 cores. 
Um, with hyperthreading, uh, the system interprets it as 32 cores, uh, which is really cool uh, and helpful uh, when you're using uh, applications that can leverage multiple threads or multiple cores, then uh, converting video or compiling video in Premiere while editing in Fusion 360. Uh, this just really helps to speed it all up. For my display or graphics card, I'm using a Radon Pro WX7100, 8 gigabyte version. Um, and that has four monitor outputs. Obviously, I'm using one, two. I'm actually using a third one for this one, and I send that over to Sling Studio. And Sling Studio is ever able to basically mirror that display if I'm doing any streaming or video capture directly to the Sling. Uh, I use Sling for multicam uh, video capture and editing um, in hopes that someday I might do live streams with multicam and all that fun stuff if I figure out uh, some valuable options and reason to do that. Um, like I said, I've got a couple six terabyte drives that are used for storage. Also got some uh, digital drives internally. I think there's probably, I don't know, 17 terabytes local. And then I use like a Drobo network drive for shared repository. And for the, for the Drobo, that's up with Sling Studio way over in that corner. Um, and that's on the network, so it allows me to send files to different machines around the shop as well as to share files with the Sling. Uh, so that's useful and that's fun. Um, what else? I think that pretty much covers it. So aside from um, this setup working for me, it's a little awkward to get used to at first. This top monitor is an awkward dimension, so it ends up being about one and a half monitors rather than what I used to have, which was one, two, three, and another one on top, four 1080p's. Now I have one 1080p down here, and then this is a, a wide format. Um, but it works well for things like Fusion 360. You get the full workspace. You can manipulate and get all in on your details using your space mouse. Very nice and compatible, as well as um, video editing. So this workstation is multifunction. When you're doing video editing, say with um, Premiere, then let's see if I can find something interesting. So your timeline is, is useful to navigate and edit, and you don't have to uh, have a really cluttered window. So it's really useful to see what your entire timeline looks like. And then I use my bottom screen here for libraries and assets for the project that I'm currently editing video for. So that's very useful and generally when I export then the media encoder will be down in this bottom screen and that makes it easy to do there as well so that's pretty much it um, this this monitor is an LG monitor I'm probably upgraded at some point um, but kind of conservative about that because it seems to be working great for now it's only a 60 Hertz so I don't play many games on this the video card does pretty good frame rate at things like uh, you know racing simulators and things like that um, so hence why I have a little controller over there if I need a break or something. Um, I would say that's maybe 1% of its use. 99% um, of it is design, ECAD, um, and MCAD. And that's pretty much it. Anyway, that's the computer workstation in a nutshell. I'll share links to all these different tools. Oh yeah, and the elephant in the room. The remarkable tablet, which I hacked with my own logo there. Not going to show you what's on it, but generally that's been following me around the shop um, and replacing pencil and paper um, and giving me a digital format to capture my notes, my plans, my um, project activities, and where we're at. So that's a cool device. I'm really enjoying using it. Uh, so that's it. We've covered electronics. Today we covered the desktop workstation. Uh, and in the upcoming week, we'll look at some of this other stuff primarily the CNC and 3D printing area, all that fun stuff. So um, I just organized all this, my filaments and stuff back there uh, recently. So that'll be included in that part of the shop tour. So stay tuned and thanks for sticking around. So that's it, what do you think? Hopefully you enjoyed a look at my computer workstation, how I've got it set up, the equipment I use and all that good stuff. Maybe give you some good ideas about how you set your environment up. In the upcoming video, we'll be looking at the CNC and 3D printing area. I'll take you behind the scenes and show you the stuff that's on my, my countertops, my space in those particular areas. 
So look forward to that. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell. It'll keep you in the know on future updates. And if you like this particular video, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you care. That's all I got to cover today. We've got more coming up. Stay tuned. We'll be finishing up the Curvecade project as well. So look forward to that. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. See ya.